Uh, hello. <laughs> Hello, my name is Hubley, and today we're going to talk about French chemist and microbiologist Louis Pasteur and the history of pasteurization. <laughs> mm, good pasteurized milk. In 1856, Louis had been the dean of the Faculty of, Scienti of Science at Lillet University for like two years. While there, he started on his studies on fermentation. What's fermentation? Uh, that what, that's what converts sugar to um, acids to gases or alcohol. Are you sure? Maybe. <laughs> okay, go on. Um... So yeah, he's studying fermentation and gets a call from this local guy who makes wine from beets and, and the guy's like, hey Louie, my wine's all sour. My wine, my wine's all sour. Nobody can drink it. It's like ruined. You know about fermentation and stuff. Can you help? And then he was like, sure. So Louie goes to this guy's place and everyone, all the scientists are like, who is this guy? I mean. We all know fermentation is a chemical process. What is he going to do, though? We haven't already tried. And it was like, you guys are dead. Seriously. I mean, research and fermentation is what I do. I'm like the dean of the universities. Louis knew what others didn't, that fermentation is caused by yeast, a living organism that turns beet juice into alcohol. Louis takes a quick look at the sour at the spoiled wine under a microscope and, and said, you see that rod-shaped microbe? Uh, yeah, that's not yeast. Yeast is round and plump. Yeast is round and plump. Um, that's a microdermia asset, which is used to make vinegar. So that's why your wine tastes so bad. So like, so like mystery solved. So everyone's super excited because because Louis is a man when it is like the man when it comes to fermentation. <sighs> so everyone's super excited. Napoleon III, who's like the emperor of France, calls up Louis and is like, "Listen, man, I know you know about wine and stuff, and lots of people are getting sick from these uh, diseases of wine, and like, that's not good. You know, I need you to figure it out. I need you to do some stuff." Louis got to work. <laughs> Sorry. Louis got to work. He looked over his previous experiments like, I have so many experiments. I've done so much to. <laughs> I have so much. I, I've done so much to, to find out about biology, microbes, and science. I can fix the wine problem that's killing all the people. Finally, finally, he finds where he figured out that heating the fermented wine would like kill the dangerous microbes. That was making the wine taste bad and like killing people. He figures out the exact time and temperature that it would take to kill, to kill the harmful microorganisms without changing the wine's taste. Because he knew, man, if I, man, if I kill the microbes and, and if I kill the microbes and make the wine safe and stuff and the wine still tastes bad, people are going to be mad. Louis took his notes to the patent office and they were like, what are you gonna call the process? Like, we need to put a name. We need to put a name on the form and stuff. And Louis was like, I like, for, I, you know what? I really like fermentation and my name is pretty cool. <sighs> so like, let's smash them together and call it pasteurization. 
So Louis, Louis went on to find cures, to find cures for um, different diseases, anthrax, chicken cholera, and rabies. He won a ton of awards and medals for his work from people in London, France, Brazil, and the Ottoman Empire. He had a ton of stuff named after him. Buildings, streets, schools, universities, and like hospitals. Um, but he's most known for pasteurization. In the late 1800s, people started using the technique to make milk safe to drink. People were dying all over the place because cause the milk was getting bad because, because of tuberculosis. When it was pasteurized, it killed micro, the microbes and it was safe. People, people were saved. It's like so many people were saved because of that. In fact, the city of Chicago passed a law in 1908 that required milk to be pasteurized. It was, it was the first one of its kind. We have Louis Pasteur to thank for.